Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My next special guest, CEO, CCO, Mark London, creator, writer of, let's see, ba uh, Battle Cats, uh, Wolven Heart, Knights at the Golden Sun, Hunt, Kill, Repeat, Honor and Curse, Midnight Task Force. I mean, I could probably continue to go on, Mark, but you've accomplished a lot over the last <laughs> 10 years. I'm sure there's more, too. Yes, yes. Um, thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Yes, it's been an interesting 10 years. I mean, the, the journey has been quite interesting, to say the least. Uh, so, yeah, and I'm, a many, uh, and I'm a man of many hats. So, uh, yes. Now, as you get to, like, year 10, do you have less hats, hopefully, that you did at year one or more hats because, it get, because the business becomes a little bit more complicated? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, you're right. I mean, it's supposed to get easier, um, which is not. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the case. But uh, but no, as, as we've grown the company, we've also grown the team. And we have a fantastic team uh, that really, really helps everybody out um, with everything that, that we're doing. So I would say that it allows me now to just focus on, on, on a few different things that I really, really want to focus on. So, yes, I, I'm a writer at heart. Uh, I'm a storyteller. Uh, at heart so that that's really where my passion is that's that's basically where, where Matt Cave came from and uh I'm, I'm, although I'm the CEO and I have to keep um the madhouse in check uh <laughs> it, it still doesn't I mean I can't stay away just from like thinking about characters and thinking about uh, world building etc so hopefully now like with everything that we have accomplished I could have more time to to maybe just write and keep on creating uh but unfortunately sometimes that's not the case Tommy <laughs> yeah fully understand so let's go back uh 10 years um if that's okay Mark because you mentioned a couple of things right the the storytelling the world building the passion for writing if I'm not mistaken really that was the birth of Mad cave right is those passions coming together you created uh, Mad cave as that publisher to be able to help tell all these stories can you kind of talk about 10 years ago where your mindset was and and how everything kind of came to fruition of course um it, it was more like a uh, at first it was a niche that i needed to scratch so yeah like 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 a lot of people in life uh that life takes you certain places that are even the safest route or in in, in my case it was what my family expected of me like okay you, you can you can either be a doctor or a lawyer or a, a business person or an engineer that's it uh that that's if you want to go that route uh, i'll support you 100 percent. if that's not the case i mean uh i'm sorry but i can i can't support you so um when i graduated high school i kind of like had to go uh in that route which which actually helped me a lot because i was a i was a business administrator major um and then i got my mba and, and i kind of like did um you know, i went the safe route or i i i guess that i i did what i what it was expected of me at the time but i always had like this little itch which was like storytelling and it was uh animation and it was characters comic books and uh, one day I just sat down with my wife and I told her that, listen, this, this is something that is really not go away. And I don't want to be that guy that wakes up when he's 60 and um, just saw his, his life flash before his eyes. And what the hell? So she was like, OK, if you're if you're really passionate about this, if you really want to go ahead, I mean, you have my blessing. So um, I'll support you. So I was like, OK, excellent. But at first, Mad Kid was supposed to be something more, again, uh, of a passion project. It was kind of like just like me writing some scripts, get, getting a few artists um, uh, on board as work for hire, and kind of like developing these stories uh, through a website, kind of like a fan made website. Still like 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 doing the the nine to five or what I was expected of. So again, little on the sidelines, I could write and I could develop the scripts. So I'm. I asked this um, advertising agency at the time, this marketing agency at the time that I needed to, to, to kind of like come up with a, with a website. And when they started seeing like um, some of the initial concepts or, and some of the initial ideas that I, that I had planned for, they were like, Hey, I, I think that this is, I think that this is worth a shot. Maybe you should try to, to make something more out of this. So I was like, okay. So that was very flattering at the time. And then before you know it, I started meeting well, like minded folks that, that actually were really into this and they were graphic designers and they had a passion for comic books and they read, they were really sequential artists that understood the medium as much as I did. And they were like, so it was a match made in heaven. And we started pushing all my stories at first. Um, and I was 
trying to come up with with a with, with a respectable publisher at first, but but it was also pushing my own stuff uh, out of the gate. So at first, it was juggling many many hats, and uh, and yeah, and the, and the rest is history. We're, <laughs> we 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 are like again, it's it's been so much, Tommy. Uh, <laughs> all, all the different um, twists and turns that, that that we had to, and all the different hoops that we had to jump up to get here. Uh, but again, as, as we kept progressing on, on on our on our own journey, um, again more people came along, people that that also wanted to write, people that also wanted to to draw for the company um, with their own projects. Uh, at first, it was a little bit more of um, homegrown IPs, um, Mad Cave, and the reason we did that was I I know how passionate creators are, and I know how protective and how hard this thing is, and I didn't want to just take create your own work at first and publish it uh, from a very unknown standpoint. And then that project fails. And then they're like, look, you didn't do your job. It's because I, I gave you my baby. I gave you my, 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 my soul here. And, and it didn't perform as expected. So, so at first I, I didn't feel comfortable just like trying to get in um, other people's work. And um, because I knew that we were starting, I knew that we had a lot to prove. So, but again, as the years went by and we started to, to actually do the work as you're supposed to day in, day out, being persistent and showing people that, that, that you are here to deliver, that your books are going to come on time, that your marketing is going to be on time, that you're going to go to conventions, that you're really, really going to do everything. Then is when two years ago, then we decided to, okay, now we can take in create our own work and now we can, we can start branching out uh, um, the publisher and be a real publisher just by publishing not only homegrown stuff, but also create our own stuff and also license stuff. And, and that's what we've been doing. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I, I would think, um, obviously not having that experience you have, but taking on someone else's work would be a little maybe stressful, right? Because of that passion that everybody has for their own creation, right? You, you certainly want to do people um, the right way. Um, how much time did you put into um, coming up with a plan of how you would handle creator own work that wasn't your own? Well, I, I have to, I owe that to Mark Irwin. Mark Irwin joined the company. He's a, he's a vice president of um, business development. And he's actually the one that helped us uh, put all that together. Um, because I was, I was really, really afraid to disappoint people, Tommy, because at first it was like, okay, you're, you're trying to come up with your own thing. You're building your own publisher. Okay. If this fails, okay. It's on me. Yeah. And that that's, it, it is what it is. But when you start bringing other people's work, uh, then it becomes tricky. So Mark has a vast experience, 30 years in the industry. And, and he was like, don't worry about it. I mean, I can I can really set up this for you. I, I can really really get Mad Cave um, the tools necessary to actually have um, all, all the different systems in place that we need to be um, res to be respectful of others' work. N not only with the contracts that they feel uh, treated respectfully, but also with their compensation. Um, the, the the money that they're going to be giving, whether it is just a, a flat fee, whether it, it, it there with comps, with commit everything. I mean, it just has so many different moving pieces that, and and everybody has a, a different situation because that's every every artist expects something of their work. So no, I just want to get this published and I just want to get paid. Just to put an example. Oh no, I want this to be a long term thing, and then I'm going to bring my A work, but then you need to pay me some royalties. Just to just to put an example, so it does have so many different moving parts, Tommy. That, that that at first I was really really intimidated by that, and 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 it was not intimidated that we couldn't do it. Um, I've always been a, a real positive guy and be like, okay, we need to do this, and that's that's what the company needs. I mean, we're definitely gonna slay the beast, but it, it was more of how can I be respectful of your work and how can I keep track of your work and show you the right documentation when the time comes and you come asking questions. How can we be as transparent and possible? So he helped us with that, and 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 so far has been has been really great. I think that Mad Cave has a one of the best deals out there for creating our own work um, because really we just want to publish excellent books and we want to give people the opportunity to just highlight their their work. Yeah, well, it's definitely coming through. I mean, you've had some quite a few banger. I mean, 
You've been canceled um, is the one that came out last year. This yeah. title was so much fun and so different. Um, just super, super unique. Obviously, Nottingham. I mean, you've had some bangers yeah. that have come out over the last couple of years from the creator own side. Yeah. That was, yeah. I think it's working out. I would say that, Mark. Yeah, yeah, I I think so too, Tommy. I mean, sometimes, I mean, it, it's very hard. I mean, as, as, a, as a publisher, of course, when, when you take work, um, whether it is that you're creating the work for Matt Cave or you're bringing somebody else's work, uh, the million dollar question is always like, okay, what are we going to publish? What? Why are we publishing this? Are you just publishing just because you're a publisher and you need to publish? Or is, is this because, as, as you so well put it, I mean, how is this different? How is this going to take people by storm? And sometimes, I mean, we try to anticipate that. But again, those titles, for example, Nottingham or You Being Cancelled has, has been fights uh, that the editorial team has had uh, with me and with the whole team. I'm being like, hey, I truly believe that this this should be published because A, Y, and Z reason, and this is the thing. So I'm like, okay, you feel passionate about it? What the hell? I mean, let's do it. And again, yes, they they, they have become they have become pretty quite successful. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. So, so Mark, um, the first title, if I'm not mistaken, was Battle Cats, right? Was that the first Correct. title that was published? So yeah, I have my, yes. box, my Battle Cats. I have more in the back, but <laughs> got my Battle Cats. Yeah. So uh, when did this story uh, come about, Mark? Like how many years before Mad Cave did you already kind of have this type of a story um, brewing within you mm -hmm. before it was put on paper? I had again, like, like every like every little dreamer out there, you you kind of have like like your top five stories that that, yeah. that you wanted to tell. So so I think that it it was quite it was uh it was quite developed uh in a sense. Of course, I had like a different vision at the time. I didn't want it to go medieval. I, I wanted to probably just do space. Uh, thank God we didn't do that. But but you see, that's how sometimes I mean the the, the creative process again, just just like helps you out in its own. So yes, to answer your question, Battle Cats was the first, but I did have like simultaneously, I had like four other uh, stories, which you so kindly mentioned, Tommy, was a Midnight Task Force. Um, we had Knights of the Golden Sun. We had um, Woven Heart. We had Honor and Curse. Yeah. Um, RV9 was written by 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 somebody, by, by another writer, but it was a concept of, of mine, um, also in the early days. And of course, Battle Cats. But again, because we weren't discovering so many different steps at first, um, Battle Cats was not going to be just like your, your typical little story. Um, because I think that I did everything wrong from a first time <laughs> writer. Because again, we just went full fleshed world building experience. And I mean, it was massive. And people were like, dude, we're just expecting like five issues, 20 pages each, and that's it. And, and, and you have like a freaking atlas of all the different regions and maps and, and and what is this lord of the rings game of thrones what is this and and we we're like ah we were we were just having fun be, being very very respectful of 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 what really really story telling and world building is so i so i think that we went uh full-fledged with that a little bit overboard we even got i think it got more complicated than it was supposed to be at first uh so it had to be the first title just because of that. Yeah. Um, but that's the fun part though, right? Mark is that whole war build, world building side. Um, that is, is that the more passionate side of you is the world building side or is it the actually putting it on paper as a story? Like what part do you um, enjoy the most out of those two? Or are they just interlocked and it's hard to choose one? It's, um, yeah, that's a that's that's interesting um, because I think that 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 plays a little bit to my background, yeah. and I think on the business side of things that when I was when I was working on the business side of things, part of what I really enjoyed was was putting the businesses together. So it was kind of the creation of how all the things have to come into place. So when you're work when you're when you're playing God and, and world building something with, with different characters that you're going to put through a grinder at times, 
I think that that's what I enjoy the most. I think that that it's it's kind of like okay, how is this going to turn out, and what's going to be the payoff, and what's going to be your ending, and okay, oof, what what could be really really cool about this character, where he's going to be his unique traits, okay, something that we haven't seen before, or maybe let's tell a familiar story so that people can identify with it. So I think that the inception of getting all those pieces together and making something work, I think that that's that's really what I'm so passionate. Uh, about at first, obviously, when you write a script and and and, and then your artist, he starts sending a few sketches or he starts putting everything. I mean, in into in perspective and making it real. I mean, of course, you, you just. I mean, your heart really, 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 really melts at that time because it's it's happening. I mean, uh, at the early stages, I mean, I was. I my wife used to used to joke about it all the time, like. Okay, thank God. I mean, you're you're you have all these people, and 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 we're paying them because they need to read your script. Because there's no worse time for a writer mm-hmm. that is to than to try to ask somebody to read your script. Nobody wants to do that, Tommy. Everybody's just like, what? How many pages is this? And when do you need this by? And everything. But when you start seeing full flesh drawn pages. And then people are gonna be like, okay, then now now we're talking. So so as a writer, because I, I can't draw. I mean, I, I draw just figure sticks. So I mean, I curse at those talented artists sometimes because I think that I'm a I'm I'm I'm, I'm a I'm an artist uh, uh, at heart. But but I wish that I could draw. Yeah. But uh, but yes. But, but when you see finalized pieces, I mean, from from your script and they come to life, I mean, that there's no there's also a payoff right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I could only imagine um, that that would be something that is, I don't know, so enjoyable, right? When you see, it's almost like giving birth, right? And then here it is, a finished product yeah. has pages, art, everything. That's got to be a really yeah. good feeling, right? <laughs> uh-huh, mm-hmm. Exactly. No, I, I love how you're putting it. I mean, it's yes, because it's literally that. I mean, you're giving birth to something yeah. that literally has been in the works for, in this case, it, hey, it, it could take nine months. To, to just like come up with, with with a story sometimes. So yes, it's given birth. So it's a, it's a big responsibility, not only when you're putting your own stuff out there, but but again, going back to publish, create your own work. I mean, it's it's a it's a big responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Now, year um, one to year ten, what are what is the high point um, for you over those ten years, and what is the low point? Um, because right, it's mm-hmm. at the end of the day, right. As much as we love comic books, it is a business, right? And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've I've dealt on the business side of the world. I have experience in that area, not so much as a publisher, obviously. But there's uh-huh. points and low points all the time. Um, of course. Do you have like mm-hmm. one that was the lowest and one that was the highest so far? Yes, Tommy. Um, the highest I would have to say is when we when we decided to do the talent search mm. uh, for Mad Cave, even even if, even coming from an unknown uh, status in, in the industry yes, and, and, and trying to put together a talent search yeah. to give other people a chance to highlight their work. Because sometimes, I mean, highlighting your work in comics is hard if you don't have the right distribution, if you don't have the right venue uh, or the right marketing. I mean, sometimes it can be hard. Uh, luckily, we have those um, like platforms like Kickstarter or Soup that they, they can help creators. I mean bring their, their their work closest to the masses but but again it, it's so hard when when you don't have any of those in place so we knew um how hard it was for us that we decided to give a shot to to other people that that, that were just amazing on his craft but but unfortunately because they were unknown nobody was going to give him the time of day so that's what we've been doing it and uh at first, when we started mad cave a lot of people would question like okay so who's your distributor who, who are you distributed by? And we're like, I don't know, just we're here knocking on doors and okay, you know, ugh, so strike one. Uh, do you guys uh, write a well-known character? I'd be like, no, this is our own characters. What are you talking about? Okay, uh, strike two. Uh, do you have talent? Hell of a talent attached to, to, to your book. What do you mean? I mean, I'm the talent. What is this? No, no, no. I'm talking about Scott Snyder, Tom King, like yeah. oh, talent, real talent. Be like, oh no. Okay, so strike three. So that's how hard it is. Yeah. But but then but then when you when you have um the talent search on our second year and you get David Hassan and you have Shane Volk and they come up with something as spectacular as Nottingham, yeah, which was basically lightning in a bottle, and it was like no well known characters, 
Yeah. No well-known talent. It was an AP that basically just took everybody by storm. It was the right work, the right team at the right time, Tommy. So that's that's really what what brought me like a lot of joy, which is where like this is what passion, this this is what Mad Cave is really all about. People doing what they love to do, putting their best foot forward, and hopefully people are just gonna latch onto it. People are gonna gravitate towards it. So that for me has been something amazing because in the industry, we heard so much pushback for something that basically Nottingham crushed. Yeah. It, it, it squashed the myth. Yeah. Uh, and so, so I was so proud. And, and I think that the, that, that has been probably like, like one of the highest points. I mean, I, I have numerous highest points, Tommy. Uh, also, the distribution that, that we have had, how lucky we have been at, uh, at conventions and how we interact with fans. Uh, again, the people that, that we brought on board uh, from the marketing staff, from the editorial staff, from the publishing side of things, all the, all the people that were for Mackey. I mean, all of those have been high points. But the talent search and coming out with Nottingham out of left field was like, whoa. This is this is amazing, uh, and to speak of a low point in 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 our careers, when I think that a, a lot of people can identify with me on this, it was uh, COVID, mm. because it was a really really dark time, especially for our industry, yeah. because everybody got um, everybody was forced to take a step back and basically pen, uh, pencils up, pencils down. Um, we had no idea what we were gonna do, but. Because I'm this uh, stubborn guy and this optimistic guy, I was like, "This is the, okay. I don't care. I mean, we're just gonna keep on working. We're gonna keep building content." And because of a lot of decisions that we made during COVID, so we we turned the negative into a positive. Yeah. We managed to secure a lot of projects that are all that are, are gonna take Mad Cave good into 2025 yeah. at this point. Because we decided, we believed in what we were doing, and so and we decided just to keep going. It would have been the perfect opportunity, Tommy. I kid you not. It would have been the perfect opportunity to pull the plug, and nobody would have said anything yeah. because, of course, COVID came. Yes, I mean, what can you do? But again, we were stubborn, the passionate team that you just like, hey, let's keep let, let's let's keep let's keep pushing. Let's let's keep uh, doing what we love, and and again, it paid off. It paid off. So. So we we turned a low into a high. I'd like to think <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I think two uh, two things that drive success is definitely stubbornness and optimism, right? And uh, I, if you look at all really good companies, um, the leadership team I think has both of those qualities, and that's why they <laughs> have, right? that's how you're here ten years, right? That's how uh, people are twenty, thirty years. It's I think those two things work well together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and again, I, of course, uh, I have uh, some some members of the team that obviously have pulled me off uh, the edge of a cliff at some times, but, but again, sure. but they, they've steered me in the, in the right direction. So, so again, I'm grateful for that, Tommy. But you're right. You're right. I mean, we, we would just like, again, it's, it's, it's like a horse with blinders. Hey, this is, this is where I need to get at. Yeah, so. Exactly. Well, before we get into some of these titles, because I wrote down a bunch of titles um, just from the Mad Cave website of what people could okay. expect. So all these titles anybody could see right now. But before we get into that, there was two acquisitions um, that happened mm -hmm. in the last couple of years that also have been really important to Mad Cave, right? Um, and you have Maverick, which is kind of a young adult imprint, if I'm not mistaken. And then you have Paper Cuts, Correct. which is more of a younger adult, right? May maybe uh, elementary, middle school area. Am I correct in how I uh, define those? Yes. Yeah. Oh, perfect. You you nailed it, Tommy. Awesome. Yes, can you, yes. Can you go into yes. a little bit of detail about how important those two are to the, the Mad Cave family? Of course. Um, I think that when, when you, again, we're first and foremost a publisher and we love, um, again, just to tell stories, but I don't think that stories, I think that stories have to be for everyone. So it was very clear since the start that is okay. We're going to start with Matt Cave, which is kind of like your adult line of books. Uh, but where do you find books for the YA market? So we were like, as Mad Cave, we want to also target that audience. We, we, th there's a need for storytelling in that demographic. So how can we 
go about that target audience. And that's the reason why Maverick was born, which it only targets uh, young adults. And then with the acquisition of paper cuts was, um, I have a, a younger kid and he, he, he loves to read. Uh, I've, I've always, I've helped him to develop his reading skills through comic books at first, not, not just when they would make us read. I mean, Lord of the Rings is fantastic and amazing that it was, but again, you were, you would get intimidated. So sometimes I think that um, sequential art, graphic novels are a great way as a segue to build somebody's um, passion for reading or that th- you can really just like move it up little by little. So, for me, it was a no-brainer, Tommy, that, that, that I really wanted Mad Cave to have a foothold in the, in the middle grade um, arena, so to speak. And that's the reason why we acquired Paper Cuts, because it was just like having, first of all, you're having the readers of the future right there. So it's, it's basically just nurturing your audience. And then they go to YA. You keep telling the same stories or kind of like stories for that, for that age range. And then you move into into Mad Cave. So for me, it was just um, j- just a vertical progression of, of what what is your target and what is your readership look like. And again, it plays to the core of what we do, which is we publish stories. So so we cannot just like go into one side of a spectrum and and negate like the other side. I mean, we're all readers. We we like stuff. But again, but they're a different age groups. Kind of like when you go to the movies and you see that a movie is rated G or PG-13 or is R. Different targets, different demographic, different likes, different everything. So we wanted with Matke, we did have this ambitious plan of, of trying to like cover everything from all the different spectrums. Yeah. Now, will um, manga play any kind of a role within Paper Cuts or Maverick? Because I know you're aware <laughs> manga is like ultra popular right now. I have four kids. They're all 18 and above. My 18 year old only watches anime. I've tried to get her to read a comic book. She does not touch a comic book, but she loves anime. So I don't know of if course. you kind of are seeing the same uh, situation with younger mm-hmm. readers is how do we bring them into your brand mm-hmm. um, with titles that are more attractive? And I have to feel like mm-hmm. maybe manga has to play a role somehow, maybe. I don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, I can't talk too much about it, but uh, we're in sync, sir. We, we're okay. in sync. Yes, it's it's a... Uh, it's a big market. It's also, again, you have to go, uh, you have to give your audience what they want. And of course, uh, manga is huge. Um, it's, it's, it's got a lot of traction. And of course, it would be a disservice uh, for Mackin not to, to, to be able to try to play in that arena. So fair enough. I, I we'll won't, see. I won't press any more in that area. <laughs> 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 That's awesome, though. Very exciting. And then real quick, over the last 10 years as a publisher, um, and specifically like the last year, there's been a lot of talk about uh, comics, the decline of comic book sales. Like, are you seeing that at Mad Cave? Are you having to maybe do things a little bit differently today than you would have done maybe five years ago because of that? And what do you think is attributing to that? Like, we know some attributing factors is you know, Kickstarter, Fund My Comic, Indiegogo. I mean, you could get hundreds of comic books through those areas. I'm wondering, is that competition that maybe, you know, five years ago, people weren't kind of looking at in a very detailed way, but now mm-hmm. like, well, maybe this is um, a factor. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yes, it, it is definitely. And, and I mean, going, going back to manga, I mean, manga made, it has really made an impact. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that is taken away from our industry. Um, Folks, uh, especially the retailers, again, they, they have limited budgets. So sometimes, I mean, it's it's even harder to try to take um, a chance on an unknown company or an unknown title um, because basically they're, they're giving you their money and they don't know uh, the reception that this is going to have. So that's also why at Mad Cave, what we did was we also tried to go after licenses, which are well-known IPs, kind of like Dick Tracy or Gachaman or, or Flash Gordon. I mean, this resonate well with others and be like yourself, Tommy, as a, as a father. I mean, I myself as a father, we, we, we know, oh, we grew up with this stuff. Okay, so this is cool. Maybe I can show this to my kids. And then, and then you basically just start getting their attention 
or they become fans of Mad Cave and the AP with that title. But then, as Mark Irwin has always told me, is like, look, it's it's licenses could be the tide that raises all other ships. So when you have homegrown titles um, like Battle Cats, or you have creator own titles like you've been canceled. I mean, sometimes retailers will be like, okay, I don't know this. Oh, but you're publishing Smurfs through paper cuts. Oh, you're publishing uh, Dick Tracy. Okay, I know those. What else you got? And I know that you take, I know that your books come out on time. I know that your work is solid. I know that the presentation is spot on. The quality of the product is there. Okay, I might take a shot on this. So that's why you have to look at this really, really three through through the 360 degree lens i know that that's that sounds super cliche tommy but 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 it's it's basically because it's hard i mean people and also yes it's it's hard and if you talk to anybody in the industry they're gonna be like oof but look at the end of the day story is king so if you have a good story if you have something that that is gonna and the best marketing that you can have is word of mouth I can see a Super Bowl ad. I can see um, uh, an advertising at a at a very cool magazine. But if Tommy tells me, like Mark, you need to read this book, I'm gonna take your word for it. That that's that's the most effective marketing. So really, what we try to do is really try to entice, and that's why we also try to be so aggressive going to conventions to interact directly with the fans. And show them and tell them like, okay, look, these are Mac Cave books, these are Maverick books, this is Paper Cuts books. Take t- take a chance, see 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 if you have find something here you like. But definitely, I think that also going back to your question, mm-hmm. I think that uh, unfortunately Netflix uh, hasn't done us any favors because the amount of content out there, Tommy, it, it's it's brutal, it's massive. And your kids, I mean, they like animation. My kids love animation. And so sometimes, I mean, when you tell them, hey, read this, why am I, why do I have to read this when I can watch this cool 30 minute, 20 minute uh, anime from Japan that it kicks ass? Yeah. Yes, you're competing with, with them. Or, oh, no, you know what? Uh, my weekend is reserved for Netflix. I'm going to binge uh, 10 episodes of the latest, uh, the latest limited series. Where's your space in comics? So there's so much content out there and, and everybody's just mesmerized by their phones that, it is hard. It is hard to tell them, listen, this is entertainment that is also good for you or that this could, could also impact you. But it's, it's mindsets. But, but I think that that's what you have to do where a little bit harder and try to educate um, the consumer at that, at that level and try to be like, okay, we have a good product. And again, of the day, if it's going to be an amazing story, um, that's really what is going to help you out in the long run. So. Yeah. Like you said, I think story is king, right? And if you have stories yeah. that are attractive to people, then you're going to attract people to yeah. your, right? Of course. And again, a lot of, a lot of the stories sometimes, I mean, and it's, it, it's good when, when this IPs that you, that you build, I mean, they, they transcend the medium and they become TV shows or they become movies or they become video games, you name it. Super cool. Um, but unfortunately you cannot lose sight of really what you're doing, which is on the public on the publishing side of things, because that's when you're gonna lose focus. I look at all those things like, hey, a lot of people always come up to me and be like, okay, so when is this getting into Netflix? When is this going? Hey, when when the time comes, I mean, it would be amazing because it would be more eyes on the publisher, and we can drop the line that I tell people all the time when they tell me like, okay, what do you do? What, what do you do uh, for work? Whatever. And I tell them, Pub- publish your comics. Oh, weren't publishers dead? Uh, comic books dead? I mean, uh, aren't you? But I tell them like, did you know The Walking Dead is, is a comic book? No. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? That very cool anime in Amazon called uh, Invincible. That's a comic book. No, you got to be kidding me. Yes. So all <laughs> those things that they put more lights and then they highlight what we do, Tommy. So it's, so it's, it's great at the end of the day, but again, you can't lose sight of who you are. And that's a publisher at the end of the day. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I think you uh, nailed it on that mark. And you're right. I think Netflix has created competition for people in a lot of different industries, right? Because, you know, time is of the essence. And when people are consumed more by those type of things, it doesn't leave time to do some of these other things that were probably more prevalent 30, 40 years ago. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Can we absolutely. Talk- yeah, I mean- Go ahead. No, no, please. Go ahead, Mark. 
Yeah. No, no, that, that, that you're absolutely right. I mean, before, I mean, going to the movies was an event. You had to make a plan for it. And you were like, it was an event. Now it's, it's you just get home and be like, you have all this ready for you. So hard. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. No, no, you're absolutely right, Mark. You're absolutely right. I thought what we do is I would love to kind of go through some of these titles because there's some yeah. titles, right, um, that I'm very excited about. Um, one I'm a little sad about, um, but we'll get into that. Um, but let's kind of talk. So we have Dick Tracy, March 24th, if I'm not mistaken. That'll hit yes. Um, yes, sir. LCS. Alex Segura, uh, Michael Moreo is on uh, the- Morechi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then Geraldo- uh, uh, Borges. Borges, yeah, Borges, Art. Geraldo Borges, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, the the covers that are on your uh, your website look spectacular. Um, so this is one of yeah. those IPs that you picked up. You got to be really excited about having Dick Tracy. Super, super excited. I think that that uh, as as Alex and um, Michael put it, I mean that this is going to be like your your year one uh, for Dick Tracy. So so it's 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 darker, it's edgier. I think that Dick Tracy has a villain roster that could rivals Batman's or even freaking Spider-Man. So uh, these guys have really knocked it out of the park. I mean, uh, Geraldo's art is spot on. And yes, those covers are divine. I mean, it's it's such a good IP. And again, it, it highlights uh, what Matt Cave stands for, which is like those cool uh, detective stories. Again, I, I, I was a child of the 80s, so... I mean, it, it just brings back memories. So again, I'm so happy that that title is coming in. And you, you guys are not going to be disappointed with, with what these guys have, have really accomplished. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've already uh, sent pictures to my local comic book store to make sure that's in my <laughs> box. Right when I saw it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that looks dope as hell, man. I can't wait to read that. All right. So awesome. the, the one I'm a little sad about is uh, Nottingham issue number 11. My understanding is there will be an end very soon to that. And that's it. Am yes. I Correct in saying that? Yes, yes. Um, volume three is the last yeah. um, of Nottingham. Um, hopefully we will have more Nottingham in the future. But for the story, uh, I think that as Neil Gaiman uh, said in, in an interview, I mean, the best stories, they have an ending. So did this, this was really fitting, Tommy. I mean, it needed to have an end. And um, I'm also very, very sad. Uh, but again, it, it's part of the journey. But but it's 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 it, it would be a disservice just to keep on lingering and, and coming out with, with more stuff. I mean that this is this is the the ending that really David had in mind. See, he started tinkering with with Nottingham. So so again, I think that you guys are also going to be blown away with this last and final arc. But that's not to say that this is the last of the Nottingham universe. I mean, we we definitely can do more if we like to. If you guys are ready for it, again. Um, I pay very, very serious attention to what the fans want. And if they want more Nottingham, I mean, we will make it happen. But so it, it's, it's, it's goodbye for now. It's not farewell or it's not like, okay, it's just he's closing the, the, the story that he had envisioned. And I can't wait for you guys to check it out too. Yeah, no, that's encouraging. I didn't know that part. So thank you. That puts hope yeah. that we could see a little bit more Nottingham down the future. But I agree, yeah. right? There needs to be some finality to stories um, because people yeah. think, also want closure, right? And when things yeah. are lingering and lingering, then you have issues that are more uh, fluff as you're trying to get to the next issue. And this is so concise, so action-packed, so gory, like everything that you want in a great comic, it's happening and it's very concise and it's beautiful, right? And so you don't want to also go away yeah. from that by trying to continue something that probably should have died a while ago, right? Exactly, exactly. No, no, no. I mean, I, I just love how you put it because that's that's exactly how we think about this thing, Tom. I love it. I love it. All right. So the next one, um, and I actually talked to Gary uh, um, Maloney on uh, X, and uh, we'll have him on the show later. But when the blood has dried, looks like it's going to be spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's uh, Daniel Romero on art. It looks fabulous as well. At least the, the first renderings that I was able to see looks mm -hmm. beautiful. That one, I believe, is April 10th, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct. Yes, April 10th. Correct, Tommy. Yes. Th those are the type of books that, that, that again, um, I think that that's going to be the standard from now on um, that you're going to start seeing from Matt Cave. Um, right now, I mean, all 
all these 10 years have been a lot of, again, trial and error, trying to find their footing. But all these titles, uh, all the type of covers that you've seen with that level of quality, that's what you can expect, I mean, from Mackie moving forward. So I'm super happy that you're also – uh, that you're so excited about that title. Yeah, it looks so awesome, man. All right, uh, a yeah. legacy of violence. So I've had Colin yes. Bunn on. I love him. I call him the horror king. The guy is just amazing yes. at writing horror comics. Love him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the legacy of violence is coming. It looks like we have Andrea Andrea um, Moody. Moody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on Andrea Moody. Mm -hmm. That also looks yes. like it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know too much about it, but can you? is there any mm -hmm. kind of insight you could give us into what we could expect on that title? Well, a legacy of violence has had actually been running for for, uh, for for I think that for a year now because a legacy of violence it's a maxi series so oh, it's yeah. actually twelve issues so that's why that that's why again you've seen this this like slow burn of the story again trying to play out with trying to play a little bit with storytelling and world building so when we first sat down with with Colin the all the editorial team especially our publisher Chris Fernandez that has worked with with Andrea and we call it on that on that title it was like okay we really want to tell this this story meaty greedy um World War II mystery that is going to come back and bite you in the ass uh <laughs> Only a those two can can actually do it. So so again, I think that we're 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 now like also getting into the final arc of a legacy of violence, which you guys will see very very soon, and we're we're hopefully going to be able to collect it down the line. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, legacy of violence has been running for uh, for quite some time now. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And then uh, the last one that I saw, actually, there's a couple more Skeeters. Um, Kevin, yes. is it Kevin Kufe? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Bob France, right? Yes, yes, yes. That that's a that is May first, right? Correct, correct. That that's a that's another that's another title that is just freaking amazing. I mean, we 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 already uh, a lot of people they they when they just read it, I mean, it's just like so fun, so much fun because it's really like, hey, it's radio, it's radioactive mosquitoes. I mean, just attacking, <laughs> attacking everything. I mean, it 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 doesn't get more funnier than that. But again, the the art spot on, the writing is very very sharp. Uh, again. We like to have fun with the stories, Tommy. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it'll be a little bit of a horror, a little bit of a comedy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, right? yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Correct. It looks funny as hell. So, um, and then yeah. King Arthur and the Knights of Justice by uh, Joe Carreo and uh, Guy, Carello. Mm -hmm. right? Um, that one I think is April. Is that April thirtieth? Does that sound right? April thirtieth. Yes. Yeah, yeah. April thirtieth. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. That's that's actually for a Maverick for a Maverick line. Yeah. Um. It's it's a it's a young adult book, and uh, and yeah, Joe has been. I mean, uh, I'm a fan of Joe. He, he's a repeat writer uh, at Mad Cave. He has um he wrote Dally in the Dark, um for us. He wrote um yeah. It's on mine now. No, I, I have Dally. Yes, yeah. really good too. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. This one was exactly. Uh -huh. Cool. Yes. 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 <laughs> So again, that's that's Joe for you right there. I mean, he built a fantastic world. Uh, again, I I really love working with Joe. So when the opportunity came and he wanted to to try to 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 come up with something amazing for King Arthur, I mean, it was very hard to say no. And it and it plays a lot in the in the in the YA realm that that we also need to publish those books. Um, I'm not going to stop publishing those books, Tommy. So I love it. I love it. And then last, um, we have Scoop Volume One. Mm -hmm. um, and that's Richard and then art by Joseph Cooper. And that's going to be a trade, right? The trade? Yes, correct. That's an OGN. So, um, yeah, expect that soon. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to say too much. I mean, I yeah, just yeah. want readers just to go in and get get <laughs> super excited about everything that yeah, that, yeah. that we're doing. But again, you guys are also going to be blown away by that title. And that one will be out April thirtieth, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yes, sir. So mm -hmm. you have all these amazing new titles coming out this year. Um, as you look at your portfolio of titles, um, what is is there a right number of titles that you want to release in a year or or no? Like every, I think, publisher kind of maybe has their idea. Is there too many? Is there too little? Or are you still kind of playing mm -hmm. around with that? We're still playing around with that. Um, but I think that... that uh... Go going back to the business side of things, I, I think that publishing is is a numbers game, Tommy, and you do you do need, I mean, a healthy output of books 
um, especially when when you built a, an infrastructure like like we have and everything um, and everything is in place. But uh, yes, so, sometimes trying to find that balance, precisely because of what we were talking about earlier, that some of the retailers or the comic book shops they might have like a limited budget or a fixed budget for your book. So sometimes you could just be like, I can't take just by principle alone. I can't take. 10 books for Mad Cave because I mean, it's just going to be too much, but, but again, but we're trying to, to play with that number until we, we feel comfortable. Um, but these titles are ending up in, in big box stores. So, because we're also distributed by Simon & Schuster. So sometimes you have the output of Barnes and Noble. And sometimes, I mean, we have some deals in place overseas that they might want also to translate your books into other languages, and uh, that's always fun when when that happens. So so again, so so you're trying to branch out. So I think that story is king again, content is king, and when you have these titles, I mean, they they can even become for the way that we are set up, they can become evergreen titles. So having having the issue launched, um, sometimes it misses the mark, but then when you collect it as a trade paperback, so it might find success in 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 other markets or or in other countries to to say the least so but going back to your question i mean some we're, we're trying to flesh it out i mean we're seeing how the our, our industries right now and, and all the news that you hear out there and all the struggles but uh but i think that we're in do we're due for a correction soon and um when that happens uh again i just want to be offering mad cave maverick and paper guts product as much as we can yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we've noticed that the consumer, that there's a trade consumer and there's a floppy consumer, and they're not necessarily the same, right? So yeah, to, to be a lot of people will just wait for that trade to come out so they could have a longer story at one time. I don't know where I, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I buy a lot of floppies every single week. I do enjoy the mm -hmm. floppy. I like my long or my short boxes that I have in the closet. Sure. It's something, it might be my age. I'm almost 50. So maybe that's just how I was raised. But I find myself uh -huh. now more toward the, the trade just because I do want to be able to sit down for an hour or two and go through a whole story and then walk away feeling like there was a beginning and end or a middle and then an end, um, yeah. at least with that story arc. So I'm not sure where I fall. I, I don't know if more people are like that, but you certainly have to play in mm -hmm. both. Are you seeing that one side of the business is better than the other or is floppy still kind of king right now? Well, they, they, again, it, it fluctuates, Tommy. It's, 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 um, it's hard to answer that question because, um, I think that, that, um, retailers are starting to notice too, that, that, uh, that trade paperbacks, um, especially because of the exposure, what you just said, I mean, they, people want their content. I want to sit down and I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go every Wednesday to pick up my book. I want to go in one soup and then and again. I think that that's that's the curse that uh, Netflix left us is yeah. now that it gives us everything. Remember the days? I mean, HBO that you had to wait a week between Soprano episodes or even freaking Game of Thrones. Still to this day, um, and and people were talking about during the week, like, oh my god, what's going to happen with this? No, now we have everything, and you're just like everything is just like so quick. Um, so. Yes, I, I think that people now, they, they want their content. Oh, how many issues is this? 12? And they have to wait 12 months? No, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm just waiting for the for the trade paperback. But on the other hand, like you, I'm also a collector. I love my comics, physical, and I like them. I like them monthly. Um, I also have long boxes, and I collect them. There, there's no greater feeling to it. But um, people, sometimes they don't want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> they just wanna. They just wanna get everything in in in, in yeah. right away. And um, and also, I think that the the how should I put this? I think that people, um, especially the collector, they do appreciate floppies more. Agree. They want their bag on board. They want their pristine copy. They want their mint um comic book and, and they even buy two one two sent to cgc i mean hey that's why i grew up that 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 was my tr trying to look at it so so you have so many different people um wanting this this type of content but but everybody's a world on their own so some people they, they just wanted to collect them and and those are still king that's how the retailers are going to go uh for you you see the amount of variants that we have each month 
and you see how much money they go for on eBay. So that's that's a totally different business. But again, you have the average consumer, which is a, an avid reader, and he wants the his story um, in a trade paperback, but now. Or you even want people now, it's, it's kind of like the debate between physical and, and Kindle, how people read books now. Um, I want to read a comic book in my iPad. I don't want to carry, I don't want to deal with the stress of space in my apartment or long boxes or anything like that. I want to to get all my books digital. So you have to try to cater to all this 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 wants and needs from from everybody. Which yes, sometimes it drives me insane. <laughs> um, but that's that's part of the game. Yeah, definitely makes the business model a little more complex, right? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I mean, believe me, I'm I'm again, I'm a child of the '80s, and 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 I love my physical books and stuff. But but sometimes, I mean, they they do take a lot of space. And but there's no better feeling like when you open a comic book and you smell the fresh ink and and, and to interact with it. I mean, with the iPad again, it loses it loses that little special touch. So, but I get it. But but it's it's also you know, different generations for for different tastes. My kids they 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 want everything digital. They they want uh, they they consume they consume entertainment different than us. So. It's 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 hard. It's hard, Tommy. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Well, Mark, is there anything else that maybe is happening this year that I wasn't able to touch on that you are allowed to kind of talk to, or did we cover mostly everything that's uh, coming up? You did your research thoroughly, thoroughly, sir. You you actually covered everything very very good on our end. Um, this year is our tenth year anniversary. Um, we're, we're gonna. Beat that drum loud and clear for everybody to know that 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 we are here to stay. That we're gonna keep on publishing great books, uh, and and that we're really gonna tailor a lot of the stories just so people can can really uh, appreciate the medium. Um, yeah, that's that. That's basically yeah. I love it. I love it. I mean, I I have so many. I have so many things that I want to tell you that that unfortunately oh, uh, like I can't right now. But uh, but yes, expect more. Expect more, 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 more good things coming forward. Damn, I, I really want to tell you, but yeah. again, the, the, the people not, they they will kill me. But but expect a few other surprises uh, before the year ends. I love hopefully. it. I love it. And then, as far as Mark the writer, can we expect anything this year too? Yes, there's going to be an announcement uh, of things that, that that I've been working on uh, for the past uh, year. And yeah. um, yes, I can't talk about that soon. But again, like I told you, it, it's part of my core. It's part of my passion. Uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to leave it behind. So, so yes, expect more more stories from Mark London this 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 year. At least they'll be announced this year. So yes, I love it. And then, what is your Comic Con? Um, schedule look like this year um, maybe like the the top ones that uh, we as yeah. fans could walk into a comic-con and see a, a booth of mad cave sure it's, it's going to be emerald city which that one is um that one is great for us but also san diego comic-con new york comic-con um i don't know what the plans are as of yet uh with c2 e2 uh or baltimore for that for that matter but it really, you can expect this just to be at, uh, at the big three at this moment, which is going to be San Diego and, and New York and Emerald City. So Beautiful, beautiful. That's awesome. Well, Mark, did we leave anything out? No, you did not, sir. Yeah. You covered pretty, pretty much everything. You, you answered it. all the right questions. Love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, congratulations on 10 years. I mean, that is such an amazing milestone as a publisher. Um, and you know better than I know how hard it is to be a publisher and to be able to grind out 10 years and be able to produce the amazing titles that you've been able to produce over that 10-year period. And adding on the young um, readers um, with Maverick and with Paper Cuts, I think is just brilliant. You certainly want to start at a young age so that way they get used to Matt Cave and that they're yeah. hopefully buying Matt Mad Cave later on um, as they're at at the right age, but congratulations on that. That is huge, man. Huge, huge. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. I mean, it, it just it, it really warms my heart. I mean, hearing you speak like this, um, because yes, it's 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 not. It hasn't been easy, but uh, but uh, again, we're here uh, giving the good fight, and and again, we'll 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 continue publishing content as long as 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 people will tolerate us.
Yeah. Yeah. I think you're going to be okay, my friend. Well, Mark, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> Thank you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you spending some time with me. I hope that we could have you back on maybe later in the year as more information comes out that we're able to kind of talk to. Um, and then I would awesome. love to have you back on and talk about some of these titles as we're into, you know, one or two issues into them. I think that'd be a lot of fun if you're okay with that. I would love that. I would love that, Tommy. Thank you. You, you just say when and I'll, I'll be here. Thank awesome. You. Mark. I really appreciate you, my friend. And I hope that you have an, a, a wonderful rest of your week and uh, we'll talk very soon. Thank you, Tommy. All you right. too. Bye-bye.